Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to our friends who are taking the time to join us to learn about how to prospect, engage, and sell using social media. I'd like to, uh, first off, thank everybody for taking the time. Second, I want to encourage you all to ask questions. That's what the question and answer box area is. And I'd also like to say I'm super excited to be here with my dear friend, Tim Hughes. Tim, can you go to the, there we go. Uh, Tim, say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Great to be here. Really excited. You know, Tim, what I love about you is that you are kind of an old school sales guy uh, that used to carry a briefcase, I'll dare say, and yep. you embraced social media. I think you were even working at Oracle at the time. You embraced social media so deeply and so widely and built such a great brand and following that I was just really impressed by your your nimbleness, dare I say. And uh, I love that we connected on Twitter and uh, moved that to LinkedIn and moved that to uh, email and calendar and eventually to a face-to-face -face meeting where we were able to share an intimate dinner in London during one of my visits there. Um, now you've moved on to uh, have your own agency where you're teaching others at scale about uh, how to grow better, smarter, faster. In fact, you've written uh, a number of books, right? This is, you, you have more than one book, don't you? I do, yeah. This is the the, the social selling book. Um, yep. uh, it's available on Amazon worldwide, but we will be talking about that later on as well. So um, please connect with Tim. He's amazing. Get his book. It is, uh, it is a really fantastic way to learn about social selling. And that's why we invited you, Tim, to uh, help us here today. Let's, uh, let's go to the next slide. For those that don't know me, uh, I've been in relationships business all my life. I, I learned it on my dad's car lot. I swore to myself I'd never be in sales. I wanted to be an astronaut. So I studied computer science and then I found myself back in sales and I couldn't find a good sales tool. So I built it before Outlook or Salesforce existed. And uh, it turned out to be a goldmine for me, enabling me to be a dad for 10 years at home when I was 40, which is amazingly precious. And I got back in the business because I saw that social media was going to change the way we work, play, buy, and sell in 2007, 8, and 9. And, uh, and that uh, turned out to be nimble. And uh, let's, uh, let's go to the next slide. If you want to learn more about some of the teachings that we do, we do a number of webinars with amazing people like Tim Hughes. We also have people like Michaela, uh, who is uh, managing this webinar in the background. She uh, gives amazing webinars on how to be nimble, how to use nimble, and definitely you want to sign up for those uh, webinars. And with that, Tim, take us away. Tell us what we're going to learn today. Okay, thanks, John. I really appreciate that. And for Michaela for, for um, doing the poll. Um, we've got a, a, a an agenda, which is where we're going to look at uh, different social media platforms for business. I'm going to talk about a simple way of starting a conversation on LinkedIn. There are many ways that you can do that, um, but um, I'm just going to talk through one. Uh, we're going to talk about how to how I use Nimble um, in conjunction with um, when I'm social selling. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Twitter um, and um, I'm going to go through and, and, and give you some advice. There's, there's a number of takeaways from here. So um, if you haven't got a pen and paper, um, uh, then uh, I should go and get one because uh, there's a number of things that you need to write down. Um, so before we get into that, I think we need to take a step back um, and actually look at the business case for social selling. I think it's something that we don't talk about enough. Um, I think some people think it's about posting on social or um, things like that, and it's not. You know, social selling is a, is a strategic way that salespeople can get leads and meetings, can track sales through the pipeline, and can actually use it to close deals. Now, I'm not saying that you do it all on social. Um, obviously, you need to talk to people, and obviously, you can pick up the phone, and obviously, you can have uh, meetings, even though you would uh, probably have those through Zoom or um, uh, teams or, or go to meeting or something like that. But this is a way that you can actually get leads and meetings. Now, what we generally say to people is that from a very conservative estimate, if you're doing social selling right, now 
I'm not going to tell you everything today about social selling. I can't do that. I haven't got enough time. But if you're doing social selling right, you should be able to get at least one meeting per week using social selling. Now, uh, when um, when um, we do it here at DLA Ignite, we can probably get eight or nine meetings. But the fact of the matter is, if you're just starting out, you should be able to get one meeting a week. Now, let's assume that turns into one meeting a week can turn into one forecast opportunity per month and that you can close one deal a quarter. Again, this is a very conservative estimate. Um, you know, it all depends on your close rate. It all depends on your ability to, to your and your ability, how many you win. But on the average deal size of a $50,000, that should be equating to an additional $200,000 uh, of revenue per annum per person. Obviously, if you have a bigger average deal size, then you would be able to close more. But that's the sort of um, business case that we would expect. And certainly you should be able to be um, selling through social um, in a way that enables you to be generating more business for your uh, company. Now, some background is the world has changed and it's changed even more as with, with COVID-19. Um, now, the research I'm going to show you here from Gartner is before COVID-19. Um, and I think that some of this may have changed, but um, what Gartner say is that the, the average person, when they're going out and buying, um, they will actually be 57% of the way through the buying process before they actually contact a, a salesperson. Now, it doesn't really matter whether it's 30%, 57% or 80%. The fact of the matter is, is that we're all empowered with a mobile phone. We all have access to the internet. We all have access to an infinite amount of content and I can look stuff up and so can your customers and prospects. And if you're not on social and you're not actively engaged in having conversations on social, you're leaving money on the table. Um, I wrote an article six years ago, uh, pretty much to the day of a friend of mine who was getting 10 C-level meetings a week through in Twitter. Now, that was six years ago. Now, you, you, you have the ability and you have the tools, and I'm going to go through some of that with you today. The other thing that's happened is that the buying process has changed. So now people are at the, there are more people as part of the, the decision making process. It's not just about going to Steve in IT and actually getting um, uh, the, the deal done. Um, there's now finance will be involved. There'll probably be a business case. Um, there'll be the user department. Um, there'll be people, maybe uh, other people in IT that you need to talk to. Depends obviously what you sell. But the, the, the facts of the matter is it goes back to even old school, which is there'll be people sitting probably now on a Zoom call rather than around a table. They will be making a decision and they will they will but there'll be a vote. And what you need is to be in a situation where everybody is putting their hand up for your product. Now, the way that you do that is the, the fact that you've made relationships and you found people on social and you built relationships with them because they will be the people who love you who like you, who then will actually buy from you. Now, the fact if, if we don't know who those 10 people are, we need to be connecting to multiple people within the organization and engaging with them, having conversations with them. So there are three key things that you need um, around uh, social selling. Um, and these are fo as follows. The first thing you need is you need to have your profile, your shop window. And I'm going to talk about this in a moment just to give you some very, very simple tips. Now, if you think about walking in a mall and you looking in shop windows, um, if there's something that interests you, you'll stop and you'll look in. And this is about creating curiosity for your prospects, your customers uh, and for them to stop and read your profile. If they're reading your profile, they're not reading your competitor's profile. Uh, the next thing you need is a network. Um, and it is true that the, that the power is in your network and you need to, to connect with people. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. Now, most people's networks are currently old ex-colleagues and uh, recruitment consultants. Well, that's interesting. What you need to do is that you need to, to move your network um, uh, from analog. So 
next to my desk I have a pile of business cards and what we need to do is take those business cards and in effect put them into um, the digital world. The third thing you need is content and you need to engage and I'm going to talk a, a little bit about that as well. Um, so here are some very very simple tips that you can do on your LinkedIn profile. You can walk away from this uh, uh, webinar and you can make the changes. So this is my LinkedIn profile. Um, I have a, a photo um, that if you um, uh, happen to meet me one day, um, you can see what I look like. Um, I have a background photo. You can have um, a company one. It could be um, uh, a sunset or something like that. But remember, this is your profile. This is not a company's profile. Uh, the next thing you have is your summary title. This summary title is the most visible piece about you on the internet. If you Google yourself, don't do it now. Um, if you Google yourself, what you'll find is because Google loves LinkedIn because it's full of content, what you'll have when you find you is your picture, your name and that title. Now, the mistake that everybody makes is that they put their job title, sales manager. I'm not interested. Um, I know that there's a there's a 25 year old I know in a, a company out there that's put passionate about digital transformation. Now, that's what he does, not why he does it. Now, I don't believe a 25 year old is passionate about digital transformation. I wasn't at 25. I was passionate about more other things in, in life. And what we're looking for, if you want to create a connection with somebody, it's not what you do, it's why you do it. Now, I've happened to have put that that title there. I get so much engagement. I've closed business off the back of that title because people have said, I've seen you make a comment on LinkedIn. I've seen you've got that title. I had to come and look at your profile. I then had, and I actually have a spelling mistake, deliberate spelling mistake, right at the bottom of my profile. And I have people coming to me and say, you've spelled experience wrong. And I know that they've read, completely read my, my profile. And that's what we're looking to get people to do, to get people to actually see you and build a relationship with you. The next thing you do is, this is about your, your, your summary at the top of uh, uh, LinkedIn. Again, this is not about your company. This is not about your product. If you write that, I know that you're going to come and pitch to me and I'm not interested in being pitched to. What I'm looking for is your why. Why is it that you do something? Why is it that you do this? Um, exactly the same format as what Simon Sinek says in, in his book, that, you know, the importance of why. This is what I want to do is I want to understand your belief system and I want to understand your the, the, what, the why that you're actually doing this. Um, and the third thing that you can do is to, to make sure that your contact details are set up on, on LinkedIn. Again, these are just very, very small, simple things you can do. The contact details are important. It's something that pe most people miss on it. Think of it as your business card. On your business card, you'll have your email address, you'll have your um, uh, mail address, uh, you'll have your telephone number, and you do all those things because you want to be in a situation where it doesn't matter. You know, if, if a million dollar deal comes along and they want to write you a letter, you want to make sure that you've given them the, your address so they can write that letter to you. Um, so those are the things that you, you can go away from here. Three things that you need to, to can go away from here um, and you can do today. The next thing you need to do is, is have a network. Now, unfortunately, you can't do these LinkedIn maps, but I wanted to give a, a, a graphical view of what a um, of, of what a network looks like. Now, this isn't contacts. This isn't saying I can connect with two with with 2000 people on LinkedIn. Um, it's about building relationships with people and having conversations. Now, if um, if I stand up and say I'm the best social seller in the world, all you'll think is that I'm an arrogant, self-promoting person. If John says that, and John is someone who, who you uh, admire, respect and love, then you'll actually believe it. Uh, just the same as um, in the old days when we used to travel and we used to book hotels, we would go to TripAdvisor and we would look at um, reviews that, that people had left. Now, those people are strangers, but we still trust in what those people have said. And we will actually we booked hotels based on what they said. Jim, can I interject here? Yes. So first off, love 
the webinar so far. Second, please ask questions in the background. We learn from questions. And third, in regards to this slide, I like to say it's more powerful when other people talk about you than when you talk about you. Yes. So don't talk about yourself or your business. Talk about how you can help other people become better, smarter, faster, because people buy a better version of themselves. They don't buy great products. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree. And, um, and, and, and we'll, there's a, you know, we'll, we'll pick up on that as, a, as we move through. Um, there's also about creating content. Um, and this is something that I often find with salespeople that they find difficult, even though we're the world's best communicators. You know, we stand up in front and present our solutions. We write uh, emails to, uh, which are action based to get people to do things. Um, we write um, proposals um, where um, we'll write management summaries, which again, which is about getting, which is again, action based. We feel that we don't have the um, the ability to write content. Now, when I was told when I was at school and I left uh, I left school, I was told never to do anything uh, where you had to write something down. Um, and I've ended up writing two books, so anybody can do this. Now, I, I, I you you can curate and find content, and I use a product called Flipboard. It's a free app. You can download it to your phone, and it allows you to search on. Um, uh, content which would be you you would find or your customer would find interesting for them to use um, there's lots of other products but i happen to use uh, flipboard it allows you to search on certain things so for example i have different magazines that i've set up marketing strategy vinyl records thought leadership Ch chief data officer and what the what the product does, it looks for, say, for example, the string of thought leadership and finds that on articles and then presents them to you. Um, and I found many a interesting special edition vinyl record from that particular um, uh, uh, magazine that I, I follow. Uh, you can also set up your own magazines or you can search on anything, you know, big data, uh, the future of work, whatever it is that you sell or the area that you're working in, um, and then share that out. The important thing about content is that your customer is looking for an expert. They're looking for somebody that they can trust. They're looking for somebody that they're going to build a relationship. They're not looking for somebody that's going to try and um, sell them something they don't want. So, Content is a great way for you to demonstrate your expertise in your area. Now, I'm going to now talk about how people are actually creating content for themselves. So, for example, Duncan K. So Duncan's actually given my, his permission to to to, to um, uh, share this. Duncan works for um, uh, Telstra, one of our clients. As you can see, he's changed his uh, a title, simplifying IT professional service. Northern at Heart, XR in London for 18 years. Again, he's somebody that gets a lot of uh, profile uh, readings and inbound from that. Now, this is just an, an article that he's wrote about uh, being a dad in, um, in lockdown here in the UK. And he's had 119 likes and 62 comments. Now, let's just be a little bit conservative and let's assume that people have liked the same people have liked and the same people have commented. So let's just take the 119 figure. Now, the average person in LinkedIn has 500 contacts. So that means that he, for, by 119 likes, that um, article could have been seen by 59,500 people. So you're able to take yourself, your belief systems, and what you sell, your company, um, and actually present that in front of your um, uh, your network and your network's network. So if you think about um, each of those 59,500 people are connected to 500 people as well, then what you're doing is that you're able to dissipate that um, uh, your what you're saying and what you're uh, and, your, and your position and moving that out through your network. Now, don't forget, your network already know you and love you. But one of the things you need to be doing is also thinking about how you sell you through your network. And that's about pe getting people who know you and love you to take your content and also put it out through their network as well. Uh, now, 
another example, um, Steve Rafferty, and we'll be coming also coming to him in a moment. Steve is the sales leader at um, uh, at Ring Central here in the UK. Again, he's given me permission to use his details. Uh, this blog here has been seen by 71 people, um, and again, 71 times 500. So 35,500 people could have seen that. Now, I would argue that actually, um, so we don't have a, um, as a social organization, we don't have a mail uh, email list. And the reason why we don't have an email list, apart from the GDPR laws here in, the, um, here in Europe, um, because we're actually t able to take our content and actually disseminate that through our, our, um, our networks quicker and faster and more efficient. And because our networks are based on permission, not interruption, people are interested in seeing our content. Um, whereas with interruption, you know, the likelihood of actually people eating, um, opening up emails is very small. One final piece on, on, on Steve's blog. Steve actually did a blog, a recruitment blog, um, and um, he had 40 people respond to that and he saved over $500,000, so half a million dollars on um, saving on recruitment fees. Uh, so that just gives you some uh, examples of different types of content coming from different people and how you can use that yourself to drive sales uh, across your um, territory. Exactly the same um, uh, 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 attitude and view on Twitter. I wasn't going to talk about this a lot. You can use the same terminology that you used on LinkedIn, um, the same background, the same photo, and I would recommend that you use those things as well. So there's some commonality. Again, um, you know, you, you're using the same um, uh, the same details that you've used in your your summary title on on LinkedIn. Um, so company versus personal, we we get this a lot. Now, here here is a company most people have heard of uh, Nike, um, probably one of the biggest brands in the world. Um, but if they stand up and say we have the best sneaker in the world, what do you think? We say, well, of course you have the best sneaker, in the world, and of course you'd say that because you're the brand. So what they have to do, and they're one of the biggest brands in the world, is they have to get people to um, advertise for them. And they still use Michael Jordan, um, though he hasn't played basketball, but basketball since 2003. And, and the reason is, is that people have an affiliation with people. So when you're using your, um, uh, using your um, social media, it shouldn't all be about the company. It shouldn't all be about what the company is and what the company is saying, because every company says they're the best. Every company says they're the market leader. Every company says that they're in the in the top quadrant in, in Gartner. But what we're doing is that not everybody has Michael Jordan. Not everybody has Michaela. Not everybody has John. And companies' unique selling points today is their people, and even more so within the COVID-19 world. So here's a quick way of creating a conversation. There are many, many ways of doing it, but it's just something that we've been showing people recently, and I wanted to share that with you today. So um, go to your LinkedIn profile, click on my network, and then click on your connections. Um, and then what you can do is that you can scroll back and, and scroll back through a, a reasonable amount of time, six months, um, a, a year, or whatever. Here we find um, Angela um, and uh, send her a, um, a message. Generic, non-threatening. Uh, not pitching your product, just asking for a chat. You know, hi Angela, we've been connected for quite a few, uh, quite a, at some time. Um, I'd like to have a chat. Not pitching anything, but I'd like to hear what you're up to. Um, now, in most cases, people will come back, and as long as you do it in this non-threatening, non-selling way, what have people got to lose? Especially if people that have got time at home. Um, and as we said earlier on, I actually said to John, it's a great time to connect with old friends. And it is. Um, and um, now when you run this call, and I, I need to say this, you don't turn up to the call and say, hey, have I got a great product for you? And we've got 30 percent off. What you do is you say to Angela, OK, what are you up to? And she and she, well, you're a LinkedIn influencer. Tell us tell us about that. Tell us tell us what you what do you do when you're a board advisor? You know, one of the great things that we great things that we are good at as a salesperson is asking questions, being curious about someone, actually being interested in, in, in what they do. And then after about 15 minutes, what they'll actually say to you is say, 
OK, Tim, what do you do? And then you actually have an opportunity to tell them what you do. I, uh, you, you can call that a pitch, but it's a way that you can created a conversation and in a non-threatening way uh, have been able to have uh, talked about what you do. Now, we've, we've presented this on a number of webinars and feedback that we've had um, has always been very positive. People have all said that they've been able to do this and have got meetings off the back of it. It's, it's one way of, of doing it and um, maybe you could try it yourself. Now, here's the, here's the script, uh, very straightforward. Um, obviously, I, if your name isn't Adam, don't put your uh, don't put your name as Adam down there. Um, but um, uh, something that you can take away and maybe start using after today. Now, talking on on social is no different from talking that you would do at a networking group. Don't be stilted. Just have a conversation with you. It is, after all, social media. It's being it's about being social. Join conversations. F find um, find your prospects and customers that are active on social and just have a conversation with them. Read their content and comment on it positively, of course. Um, Steve Rafferty at, um, at Ring Central, he was targeting one organization um, and he went through and had conversations with 203 people until he found somebody that actually would have a conversation back with him. He then had a meeting off the back of it. So. Like always within sales, this isn't about finding the first person that you come across on social, finding the person doesn't engage and then giving up. You have to go on. If there's a particular organization that you want to sell to, as always within sales, there will be multiple touch points within that organization that you can get conversations with. And it may not be directly with the person that you need to sell to. You may be talking to other people who will get there for you. Um, so that's what I wanted to talk about in terms of some of the simple things um, about how we can use um, uh, social selling, um, some things that you can take away. The way that I work with Nimble when I'm social selling is that um, I tend to be in two different places. I'm either in LinkedIn and then um, I'm, I'm also able to be um, within Nimble or what I'm doing is I'm, I'm actually in Nimble myself. So this is a great example of here I'm in, I'm, I'm in um, uh, LinkedIn. Um, as I say, Steve Rafferty has given me his details and said I could actually use this. Um, and then what I'm able to do is by using the, um, the, the uh, browser plugin, I'm actually able to take the details from LinkedIn and actually put that directly into um, Nimble. I'm able to add notes. For example, when you're first starting a sale, you may not have any email. It may be just a case of, I've spoken to Steve, uh, he said, you know, we've got a real problem with discretionary spend right now. Give me a call back in, in uh, June. It may be that you then want to log an activity. So you, what you'll do is you, you actually log the fact that you're going to give Steve a, a contact um, back in June. Um, you can schedule stuff. Um, I, as a, a leader, can actually assign this to, to, to other people. Um, so I'm able to actually get them to, to, um, um, to pick up the, the, the deal them, themselves. Um, the same thing goes for um, uh, Twitter. Again, what you're able to do is look at Twitter and then work out, do I need to add any notes about Julie, log, uh, schedule my time, log any activity, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you're, not, so you're not having to switch between Nimble and, um, and uh, Twitter. You're able to actually do the, t the two things at the same time. John. Yes. Pass me the screen, Michaela. Um, first off, uh, I love how succinctly that you are able to uh, share the information with us, Tim, because I think that a lot of people are a little bit um, scared of using social media to engage and they maybe are old school. Uh, they're used to doing it the old fashioned way. And uh, and I think that you make it so digestible. That's why I loved your uh, I love the way that you engage and I love the book and I love hearing this background. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to just cover some of the sort of basic concepts that you talked about uh, earlier. First off, can everybody see my screen? 
yes, I see it yes. on the webinar thing. So, um, so I think that the main thing that you started to talk about was setting up your shop, right? And and one of the things that uh, you set up your shop about is because people are going to Google you. Uh, and this is actually one of the questions that somebody in the audience had was, um, you know, what 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 should we do to show up on that first page? And if you look at my Google, you'll see you Google my name and it's, um, you know, I'm doing pretty good. But uh, but I do have a unique name, John Ferrara, although Ferrari is like Smith in Italian. But uh, I do show up. And if you look at some of the things that I do, uh, Google uh, rewards you with a Wikipedia site. So if you haven't created a Wikipedia site for yourself, do it because you can. You just need to do it properly and cite, um, you know, articles and things. Have you done that for yourself, Tim? Uh, I haven't. I'm just making a note of it. Good. And because if you look at this, I get rewarded really big here. I get uh, my picture and I get um, all kinds of good stuff in there. Google's telling you where I went to school, all kinds of good stuff. And, you know, in the old days, I used to teach people when you go in somebody's office, look at their walls, look at the books they read, the degree of the school they went to, the knickknacks they collect. And you do that in order to figure out what you might have in common with that person. And then you use those commonalities to break the ice and develop intimacy and trust. Because without intimacy and trust, people aren't going to open up to you about their business issues. And I really believe that if you want to create a deep relationship that moves beyond a transactional relationship, a business relationship, that you need to move beyond, um, uh, say, LinkedIn and move into places like uh, uh, Facebook and Instagram. And I call that the five Fs of life, family, friend, food, fun, and fellowships. This is where deep personal relationships are created. Today on this webinar, uh, Bryn Tillman, who is also another amazing teacher of social selling uh, processes, et cetera, when I went to Philadelphia, I took the time to have breakfast with her and she brought her boys and we built a connection through that conversation that uh, that I think that will outlast anything else I do in regards to the business aspects. So take those relationships and move them forward. So like Timothy said, set up your shop uh, and your shop isn't just LinkedIn. Uh, your shop should include uh, other places as well. And if you look here, when I say family, friend, food, fun, and fellowship, you can see that my Instagram is filled with family, friend, food, fun, and fellowship. You can see that I like to cook. You might connect with me because you share one of these commonalities, and we could talk about those different things. And if, by the way, if you like to cook, um, I like to cook, so we could talk about that. I like cars, uh, and I love my wife. She teaches me something amazing every day. And so um, once you've set up your shop, then what you want to do is, is, like Tim said, share content on a daily basis. And this is like a fishing lure that goes out into the social river that enables you to create connections that turn into conversations that ideally turn into what I call mutually beneficial uh, relationships. Because you're not on this planet to make a lot of money. Look, I've made a lot of money and money isn't it. We're really here on this planet to make memories out of moments. And those memories out of moments create opportunity in life. And your main opportunity in life, I believe, is to grow your soul. Now, I'm sorry to get a little spiritual with you, but they're not going to write on your grave, made $100 million. They're going to say beloved father, friend, husband, wife, et cetera, parent. And so... Um, I believe that if you trend, if you change your, your aspect of why are you connecting to other human beings from trying to make as much money off them to trying to help them grow as best possible, then you can't help but be successful in life. And ultimately, uh, I simplify it down to this basic formula is that we're on this planet to grow our souls and we do that best by helping other others grow theirs. But you could translate that into you're on this planet to help other people grow and you can get anything you want by doing so, which is essentially the mantra that Zig Ziglar, one of the greats, taught. And so when I share content on a regular basis, it creates these uh, engagements, these notifications. And then what happens is I could take those engagements and turn this connection, this uh, this conversation into a uh, a relationship. 
And so you can see, Debbie, sorry for um, uh, pulling you up like that. But by the way, Debbie, I, we're always in the need of better copy uh, So uh, and also PR. So feel free to reach out. Uh, we can talk about some things that we might be able to do together. So without lifting a finger, I created a record for Debbie. So what I'm doing is I'm reeling in the relationships. And we're reeling in the years, going away at the time. All right, what band is that? Um, <laughs> so basically, now I know a little bit about Debbie. I can add her as a contact into Nimble. And most importantly, there should be some follow-up and follow-through. And so what I might want to do is create a task for myself. And I'm having a little bit of bandwidth issues here at uh, my remote treehouse. I don't know if you guys can hear the birds uh, here. But uh, essentially, I would then create a, a task uh, to uh, do a next step. Because if you don't have a task created for a contact, then it's a meaningless contact that you created. It's the basics that wins games. It's the follow up and follow through. And that's where we fail as human beings. Because typically, what I would have to do is copy Debbie's information and go paste it into my CRM and then, uh, uh, and then basically go and log what I did or what I need to do. But the reality is that your CRM should automatically work for you by building itself and then work with you everywhere you work. Because ultimately, if you think about where are your contacts today, if you're an individual person, which I think Nimble is a great personal CRM and everybody should have a personal CRM because your network and your brand are your net worth. But also in a business, you have siloed contacts in sales, marketing, customer service, and accounting. And you might have your contacts in, say, QuickBooks. You might have your contacts inside of uh, Office 365 or G Suite or MailChimp or whatever. And what Nimble will do is unify all those into a cohesive whole and then uh, enrich them with people and company data and then work back where you work. And I think we all really still live in our email inbox. And so whether you're using G Suite or Office 365, Nimble will come up when you uh, open up an email. And every time you open up an email, there's typically something you need to do and you don't do it because you have to go to your CRM to do it. And with Nimble, it works with you uh, everywhere you work and it works for you by automatically building records like I showed before. And so this is my basic workflow that I do is I build a persona and I share content beyond my business side because my business persona is like walking into my uh, lobby. And what you're gonna see is uh, John in a suit, right? My business persona, but even in my business persona, what I do is I, I humanize it. And in this particular instance, this is a photograph I took in Kauai when I was hiking. And uh, I absolutely love this picture because uh, my family didn't want to walk up to the top of this muddy hill. And I said, no, I really feel like there's something there. And it was like raining and, and just cloudy. And all of a sudden we got to the top of the hill and it opened up into blue sky and that rainbow was there and this rainbow will be with me the rest of my life. So I share a little bit of my humanity with other people, which helps people to connect with me. And then I share content to, uh, to inspire and educate others about how I might help them become better, smarter, faster. And then people engage with me. Here's another example. There is this lady, Tiffany Bova, used to be the serum analyst at Gartner. Now she's a spokesperson for Benioff at Salesforce. And she was saying that CRM is about command and control. It's about empowering customer facing business team members. And somebody said, bullshit, it, it is about command and control. A winner sales manager is gonna loosen the grip. And isn't this what John has been building and teaching with Nimble? And so <laughs> Nimble will automatically listen to the signals that people say about you, the team or the brand, and then automatically surface them on your today page so that you could then go ahead and engage with Nimble told me about that. So I was able to then take this person and build a record for them where I learned that this person is not only um, uh, a in charge of CRM and, and data at Disney, but also uh, I was able to build a record for him. Nimble will give you uh, the email for somebody if you give Nimble first name, last name, company, domain name. So I was able to respond more effectively in the stream here, but then take his record, build it, and then send him an email to thank him. And then that email then shifted to a LinkedIn connection and conversation 
where I learned that his daughter and him live in my town and his daughter goes to school with my daughter. So I invited him for breakfast because I think you need to take digital relationships into human face to face. And then he basically turned out to be a, uh, an evangelist for, uh, for Nimble. But the thing is, is that I think that I was able to do all this because Nimble then works on all the places that I'm engaging across everywhere I'm working. And that's the basic sort of formula for you to use on a personal basis or on a business basis, even if you're currently using a CRM at the office, because you can take your network with you to work. And so if I'm engaging with Ken Krogh uh, and, uh, and essentially I need to build a record in Salesforce, I could easily do that within Nimble and I could even uh, get his uh, contact info and anything I do in Nimble will be bidirectionally synchronized back into Salesforce. So I can prospect better, smarter, faster, even if Nimble isn't my CRM, it's the engagement tool that I use because I think what makes Nimble so great is that it's really a good contact manager. And that's the heart of the of the best CRM is a, is something that empowers the customer facing business team member. And that's why we basically built something that's not only a market leading CRM, but also delivers sales intelligence. So you don't have to go out and buy uh, sales data. We enrich that for you and then engagement tools. So I could then outreach, et cetera. And so essentially, if I wanted to then take the people that I'm building relationships across social media and segment them into a group, I can segment them based off the data that we've en enriched it with. And then I could take that group of people and send them a templated one-to-one -one message to, um, to, uh, to follow up with them. That email then comes from my email to their email, and then I'll get signals on the opens and clicks. And so this is the sort of basic workflow of uh, build your uh, shop window, like Tim said, share content to inspire and educate other people, engage with those, reel them in and build records, engage with them not with the intent to sell them but to serve them because service is the new sales and uh if you rinse and repeat that you're going to have more connections than you could ever imagine and you're going to help more people grow than you've ever imagined and you will achieve the dreams of your uh lifetime and uh so with that that ends the uh the demo section Tim, could you share with them uh, any special offer that you'd like to share? Uh, yeah, so um, um, if you buy my book, Social Selling Techniques to Influence Buyers and Changemakers, from the Kogan page website, um, they will give you 20% off um, if you use the promo code uh, SMK20. Okay, and uh, for those that uh have not already uh signed up for nimble there's a 30-day trial there uh for that link there and if you do decide to sign up for nimble we'll give you 40 percent off your first three months using the code john 40. uh ideally we would be offering our existing users something and michaela if you can come up with something for our existing users i think it's always nice to thank our existing customers with something uh as well and uh and with that uh let's go ahead and do some questions so let me find the question um uh doc here um let's see okay so if you haven't asked the question now is a really good time to do so um so so so, the, so, so funky um it's always um, best to write it in the first person. So it's about I. I, I did this. I love this. I, I, um, I transform this rather than um, Tim Hughes is a is a uh, uh, is a energetic and um, uh, tenacious salesperson. Okay. So that was the question. Is it always best to write in the first or third person? Yes. Um, you want to keep going, Tim? Uh, yes. So, Debbie, the term brand. Can we can we mix mix that and find a new term? Brand sounds so unapproachable. Uh, yes, it does. Um, which is why I was kind of saying shop window. It's um, I find personal brand the term which kind of found it seems just too high. You can't achieve it. Um, and um, it's more about you know this at the end of the day it's about you. 
um, and, and people understanding you and ultimately turning a very flat um, uh, one dimensional um, uh, social network into a three dimensional view of, of vision of you. Um, so, so, so Tim, I have uh, some fairly strong feelings about brand and, and network that I'd like to share. Yeah. I think that um, if you go back a hundred years, we all lived in a small town and our reputation was made on the promises that we made and the experience that we delivered. And, um, and, uh, and that today social media, I think is transforming the world into a small village and uh, bringing us back to the small town. And I think that reputation might be something to consider because ultimately your brand is, you know, when you talk about brand, it feels like you're talking about a company, but your reputation is uh, really kind of humanized and translatable. Just an idea. Yes. Yeah. T totally agree, John. Um, yeah. Yes. I probably got a bit overexcited. What's the name of the app? Yes. The app, the app's called Flipboard. Um, it's on the App Store. Um, it's free. Uh, Glenn, when you say you Googled yourself to learn a good byline, I tried that and all I see is my accomplishments, nothing that describes who I am. Did you try searching for something more specific, not just your name? Um, well, I would start with your name um, because you're in effect contr in control of what Google serves. Um, I mean, John, you're a great example of, of you Googled your stuff, but you know, you, you, you know, what's, you know, that you, Google is going to serve that stuff up or you can guess it can. Um, so, um, you know, if, if you LinkedIn, Google loves LinkedIn because it's full of content. Um, it's got millions and millions of pages of, of content. So when you Google yourself, you will, the, the LinkedIn profile will be always, if not, if, if you're, unless you're a Hollywood film star, it will probably be the first thing that will be seen. Let's see how Michaela's is doing. Yeah. Michaela, yes. you're rocking it. <laughs> oh boy. Jenna, what is the address <laughs> for finding curated content? Um, yeah. Uh, well, there's a number of places you can find curated content. Um, Flipboard is one of the apps that I suggested. Um, there's a lot of other products like that. Um, Twitter like is another great place for finding content. Sorry, John. Buzzsumo is a pretty good one. Yeah, Buzzsumo. Um, um, but plenty of of, um, of of products. Um Debbie, reputation marketing sounds promising, doesn't it? Using reputation marketing instead of the word brand. Uh yes, it does, yes. Um it is about your reputation. Um I, I'm, I'm gonna make a note of that. Thank you, Debbie. Um Pierre, how would you go about finding agents for a new company, water sports products? John, you're the you're the ace. You, you you've got a great story of you going to going to that Microsoft conference. Yeah. Um, so um, so in regards to finding people to represent your products, I think that you want to find somebody who's already a trusted advisor of your products and services, uh, a trusted advisor to the prospects that you'd be selling your products and services to. And that's actually how I built two global companies is identifying the trusted advisor of my prospect. And in both cases, it was, well, in Goldmine days, it was the person who sold them the network because I had a networkable business program that run on top. And today it's Timothy, honestly, it's people like you because uh, you are the trusted advisor of my prospect and I've essentially identified the top thought leaders in social sales and marketing and built relationships with them by sharing their content and engaging with them and turning them into users and uh, and evangelists. So uh, if you think about a small business, who are their trusted advisors, accountants and lawyers and consultants, et cetera. So there's already somebody who is uh, already touching the channels that you would want to sell through. And that's where I'd start. Yeah. And, and you know, get working out who your um, ideal customer is you know it may be um you know a t particular type of person um and you can find them and, and look for them on social media yeah uh, do you want to pick up glenn's question um sure John? sure sure so 10 years ago <laughs> or eight years ago uh linkedin gave me uh their public and private apis and we had full integration across 
uh, messages, notifications, uh, email lookup, synchronization of contacts, et cetera. But now with LinkedIn Sales Navigator, they want to sell you uh, a tool so we don't have integrations. And uh, you need to tell Nimble that you're on the page. So if I highlight the name, it'll bring up the record or build a record, but that's just a string. If you want to do that a little bit more uh, effectively, uh, you can go ahead and, uh, and do that. Uh, and I'm just gonna go ahead and pick on somebody here. So essentially, if I wanted to build a record for a person using our, uh, using our plugin, then I could uh, go ahead and uh, and essentially you go to contact info and that gives you the LinkedIn URL. And if you do that, then Nimble will go ahead and uh, and build the record for that person like that. And so you could either use the LinkedIn URL, you could use the string of the name. If you're on a record like this, you could um, you could use uh, any of these unique identifiers, essentially give Nimble a unique identifier and it'll build a record for somebody. You could do that literally on a uh, a business page. So if I'm reading an article and I want to build a record for this person, I highlight their uh, their name and then Nimble will go ahead and uh, make suggestions. Once you say yes to those suggestions, then it'll go ahead and build a record for that person like that. If I want to add that contact to Nimble, I can do it like that. If I want their email, you give Nimble first name, last name, company, domain name, and it'll go ahead and give you all the contact info. And I just built a record for somebody off of Forbes article, which was just a string in literally uh, three seconds and uh, four clicks. Love it. Um, the next question is, um, Lavella, um, can you share warnings for possible scammers profiles? Uh, I think what they're basically saying is that people build profiles to sort of scam you. And I think the answer to that is you feel it when you see it and you know it doesn't feel right um, yes. and you just ignore them. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I, you can usually tell when someone's a, a scammer or not. It just doesn't feel right. Um, Morgan's question. Um, Unfortunately, the the um, maps, I'm not aware of anything of, of maps now that are able to do that. Um, and that's because of the um, the European GDPR um, rules. Um, need tip on creating a Wikipedia profile. Any concerns about that being an open source platform or would you potentially affect your branding? Um, what does that mean? I'm actually being told my, my, publish, my, my publisher that because it's an open source platform, it's not a legitimate. If when I was writing writing my books, I wasn't allowed to use and, and quote Wikipedia. Um, but I think most people have uh, it's become embedded in society as being a place to go. But you just need to be careful because there's fake news all around. Yeah, but the thing is, is that um, I think that it's really easy to build a uh, Wikipedia site. And uh, and it essentially helps with your brand. And so if you have accomplishments, if you've been published, if you've written a book, if you've spoken before, I think that any of us could qualify for a Wikipedia page and it'll definitely help you with your search. Yes, I um, mean, it's, it's full of content. So, and Google yeah. loves content and we'll index it. Okay, I'm just gonna rapid fire through these. Can Nimble pull contacts on constant contact, capsule, CRM, Etc. Nimble can bidirectionally synchronize with 200 SaaS business apps. We will bidirectionally synchronize all of them into a cohesive whole. You get up to 2,000 uh, contacts free sync per month. In the first two weeks of signing up for Nimble, it's unlimited sync, which means you could use Nimble to pull in contacts from any app, all the apps that you have in your business unlimited hundreds of thousands it doesn't matter. Once they're unified, then you get free 2,000 changes per month sync. Uh, built in. Uh, so you could use Nimble as your social sales and marketing system or within your social sales and marketing systems because Nimble is a really awesome SFA engagement tool. So you don't have to necessarily go out and buy Raintree, Discover Org, Sales Loft, Outreach IO, etc. It's all built into Nimble. Um, just popped in the webinar. Did you say you could stay with an Outlook to operate Nimble? Yes. If you add Nimble to Office 365, it's automatically added to Outlook Desktop and Outlook Mobile. And whenever you bring up a contact, it'll bring up the contact if it exists. If it doesn't exist, it'll build the contact. 
Um, on the profile, as mentioned, that you should not use your title. I mentioned other ways we can create curiosity or gain more attention. Did you say that, Tim, that you shouldn't use your title? Yes. Okay. Why? Um, because, uh, well, the, the rules for you is slightly different because you're a, a, a CEO and that's that's that that's important and you've got accomplishments. Uh, most people, if you put in um, that you're a sales manager, nobody cares. So what we what we what we uh, what we always recommend that people do is that they put in their why, not their what. Okay, there it is. Uh, do you think people are completely open to being engaged on LinkedIn if you may not have a stronger? Yeah, I want to talk to this for a second. Look, um, I think that people are interested in anybody who can help them grow. And if you engage with the intent to help somebody grow and you've done your homework to learn about that person in their company such that in your outreach, you can clearly say, why you're connecting, what's unique about the person you're trying to connect with and what value you'd like to add, you have a pretty big chance of doing so. But the best thing to do is to walk in somebody's digital footprint and add value to the conversation so that when you do reach out, they already know who you are. And that's what I typically will do is I'll walk through people's um, uh, footprint and add value to the conversation. So in the end, they actually reach out to me. Um, but you definitely, uh, people are open, but they're not open to being sold. Nobody wants to be sold. I totally agree, John. Uh, I recommend Feedly for content. That's great. Yeah, Thank you. That's Hello. Uh, is there such a thing as too much activity on LinkedIn? Yeah, I think so. I think I think that on Twitter, you could basically, you could shout every second and nobody would necessarily hear you. I think on Facebook and LinkedIn, it's more limited. And I think that uh, if I if I used to think about when I used to do this more uh, often, I, you know, Twitter every hour, uh, LinkedIn, maybe four or five times a day and Facebook about the same. Um, yeah, yeah. It's it's a uh, um, I wouldn't post a lot on on LinkedIn, as you say, um, depending yeah. on the, the time zones. Yeah. But, but Twitter every hour. Yeah. Uh, people are sharing their dreams. Uh, and a project. You know, I, I really think that you should share much more than your business stuff. I see so many people's Instagram and things where they're essentially, they, they just have a bunch of memes up there or it's a bunch of business stuff. And I think that people don't connect on, um, uh, on all that business stuff. I think you need to roll up your sleeves, open up your shirt and show your heart and soul. And, uh, and I think in doing so, um, that's how people really connect. And here is, Here's somebody dancing an Irish jig uh, in uh, Dingle. And uh, I, I, I certainly agree, John. If you've never been to a pub in Ireland or to Dingle, you definitely need to go because it's one of the best experiences that you could ever have. So anyways, uh, yes, share your dreams. Um, share your heart. People, people share your people. stuff. Yeah. People, people buy from people they like, know, and trust, and they like yep. and know you and trust you when they're connected to you. Um, when you get somebody's email using Prospector, how do you reach out to them? First, via email or social media. You know, typically what I like to do is I like to do the soft approach first, like I shared with you before. And if you think about the way that I connected with this person, Theodore Rand, he connected with me by talking about me because I was sharing content that was inspiring and educating to him in around the areas of his passion. And when I did reach out, it was uh, it was like he immediately responded. But typically, like if I'm looking at Ken Krog and uh, and I'm reaching out to him, I wouldn't necessarily just cold email him. Uh, but if I did, if I did, I'd walk in his digital footprint and find an area of commonality and connect on that. As an example, Ken Krog has two sons who are Eagle Scouts. And I don't know if anybody out there is an Eagle Scout or a parent of an Eagle Scout, but it's a quite a journey and quite a bond. I have two sons who are Eagle Scouts. I was an assistant scoutmaster for eight years. And uh, when I shared that with Ken, it immediately built trust. And that is one way to do that. But typically, uh, I don't just blast an email to anybody. But if I do, it's highly personalized. And it is relevant and authentic. 
and I, uh, I offer value and a reason to connect. And typically they do. But if, if what's going to happen is they're going to Google you if they consider connecting with you. So you have had to build your brand and persona and make sure it aligns with the persona that you're reaching out with, if all that makes sense. Yeah, I, I actually write in my social selling book, John, about how you and I met, which is really? um, uh, you, you spent the first 15 minutes on a call sharing me your vinyl records. <laughs> uh, I'm actually sitting in my office with my German turn belt driven turntable right now, looking at my Tenoy uh, studio monitor speakers that I love to crank up. The yeah, music. You, you showed me your live in Leeds, the Who um, album. Yeah, that was a, that's a classic. OK, yeah. uh, anyway. When, do, not using your title makes it difficult to be located by recruiters. I don't the, disagree, Morgan. So, so there's um, there's two things about your there's, there's things about your, your your title. So there's two titles in effect on on LinkedIn. One is your summary uh, title at the top. The other is the title of your job. They're different things. Um, if you're looking for a job, um, yes, maybe. Don't forget that once you actually set your title, it's not set in stone. You may want to change your title because you may want to experiment with it. Um, but um, we had somebody that was um, uh, we were training somebody and they said, I, I, I'm a serial entrepreneur. So we went on to LinkedIn and there are a million people who are serial entrepreneurs. It doesn't make you stand out. There are 250,000 people who are best selling authors. Again, being a best selling author doesn't make you stand out. There are I think it's about a million people who say that they are um, uh, thought leaders. This is about you standing out and about you being different. Um, and most recruiters expect you to have an understanding of your digital capability in, in the world today. OK. Um, is there any well, training Nimble available? There is a yes, there's a webinar there. There is a question, does Nimble work with HubSpot CRM? Nimble actually works with any program because Nimble can basically come up in any program, but we do buy to actually synchronize with HubSpot CRM. But like I said before, if you turn Nimble on on any page, Nimble will automatically build a record or bring up a record. You can even turn it on on a company's uh, website. Um, so training for Nimble, go to nimble.com company webinars. I'm a big fan of LinkedIn for prospecting. Uh, like executives, uh, it's a great place to get more contacts. Please share. Was there a question? Oh, is there a group? What was the question? I, don't well, I think I think in terms of groups, it's just something you need to 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 um, um, follow. If you're looking for um, a great group on LinkedIn, funnily enough, it's actually um, so. There's a guy based in Chicago, I think, called Andy Foot. Um, which is F double F double O T E. Uh, he also has a LinkedIn group on um, um, on Facebook. Um, Brent Tillman, who um, is, I don't know if you're, you're still on Brent, she's out. Somebody else is what you're worth worth connecting with and talking to. Um, she's a great uh, resource for stuff around uh, social selling. And you know what I love about Brynn is besides her beautiful smile um, is her processes. L L Bryn is a process king, queen. And uh, and if you want to learn processes around doing this, she is uh, she's good at that. Um, yeah. Then we have a code for Tim's book is right so there. The so the promo code is uh, SMK20. So that's Sierra Mike Kilo 20. Uh, and you need to purchase it from the Kogan Page website, which is koganpage.com, K-O-G-A-N-P-A-G-E.com. Okay. Thank you, Sharon. So I think that's it then. Targeted prospect connections to find additional target clients and research and work groups they're in. Okay. I think that's a that's concept, right? He's saying targeting a prospect's connections to find additional ones. Yeah. You know, as a kid, I used to do a lot of um, scrambling in rivers, if you will. In fact, I took my family during this COVID crisis up to the, one of the waterfalls and creeks that I 
often uh, went to as a uh, a young boy. And yes, this is going someplace. Um, so this is the waterfall that uh, that I uh, that I took them to. And if you follow this creek down, it gets to the point where you can only go through down the canyon by jumping on these little hogweeds that are growing uh, in the river. And so what I like to do is I like to network off of other people's uh, networks. And so uh, I will go and see who they're connecting and communicating with, uh, et cetera. And in places like, um, like uh, Twitter and other places like that, it's really easy to do that. And so people connect to people like themselves. And so if I wanted to, uh, you know, expand and grow my uh, network, I could easily do that by connecting off of, uh, by basically just jumping from one rock to the other in order to build and grow my network. And, uh, and it's really uh, quite easy to do because Nimble will actually uh, import uh, Twitter lists. So if I wanted to, uh, I mean, if I wanted to go and uh, and basically, uh, do you have any Twitter lists on your account, Tim? Um, I yes. yes. So so if I wanted to go find um, uh, people that uh, were uh, that you have already um, curated, I can import that Twitter list into Nimble. And then once that list is uh, imported, I could then go ahead and um, begin to engage with them. And so I think that that's really a good point is that you can, um, you can basically build connections off of, uh, off of other people's connections in order to expand your network. And with that, I think that we're done. And, uh, and I'd like to just close out by asking you all to connect with us because we're here to help you grow. We'd like to learn more about you. So please do uh, connect with us on whatever channel is effective for you. And, uh, and Tim, uh, why don't you close us out with some parting thoughts? Uh, thank you, John. I, it's been, um, mm -hmm. for me, it's been excellent. I've, I've loved all the questions. Um, some of the things that I've got um, and learned is about the importance of building networks, um, and and also I, I love your your the, what you're talking about uh, in terms of the attitude about it's not about actually trying to sell stuff, it's actually about trying to help people. Amen to that. And uh, there's a final question: Are we going to be sharing the deck and the video? And the answer to that is a big yes. Anybody that is subs, uh, subscribed to the webinar will be getting a copy of it. And yes. uh, and with that, please be safe um cherish the the people around you uh the best gift you can give anyone in this world is your presence so when you are with another human being put your phone down look them in the eye and gift them the best gift of all is your smile and your presence good luck and good selling thank you so much for coming uh adios amigos thank you everybody amigos.